Welcome to this introduction to Fuser. In this video, I will be covering some of the main features Fuser has to offer. On the right over here, this is the Revit project that I will be working in. If I go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and the Linked File Manager, these are all the linked files that are synced in with Fuser right now. I'm going to press OK to back out of that, and I am going to go to a free camera and zoom out a little bit or fly back so you can kind of see the project that I'm working in. These are all the buildings that are synced in from the various linked files. Also one thing to note, all these trees that are loaded in are actually RPC replacements. So we take your RPC trees and replace them with actual nice looking geometry. The first feature we will be looking at today is the edit selection feature. As I walk up to this planter box and select it, and go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and the edit selection button. This will actually look through your different plan views and find a plan view with this object and select the object for you. Now we can go straight into our edit type and change this material. I'm going to look for a stone material to replace this with and take this one, press OK and OK. And now all this information gets sent over into Fuser. And there you go, it updates and now we have these stone planter boxes. So just a really easy way of finding objects and editing them inside of your projects. The next thing I'll be showing off is the avatars. As you can see right now, I am the male avatar. You can actually change the avatar's clothing by using avatar customization. And this will let you scroll through a few different outfits. The default will be the construction worker, so this might be an avatar you'd want to use if you're in the early phases of development. You can go ahead and switch back to the suit avatar and show off a few more things. You can actually change over to the female avatar or the child avatar. The cool thing about these different avatars is using the mouse scroll wheel will actually move the camera into a first person view. Now the camera will sit at the correct eye height of the avatar you're using. If I switch back to the male avatar, you can see that the camera will actually move up to be at the correct eye height for the male avatar. Finally, if you are the male or female avatars, you can turn disability on or off. Turning disability on will place that avatar in a wheelchair, and this just gives you another perspective of navigating your project. The next thing I'll be showing is the Clash Manager, as well as how we support the editing of linked files. If I go to my Tools category, we have the Clash Manager. I already have a project, but I'm going to go ahead and click the new one to start a new project. And I'm going to go down and check off a wall and floor for each one of my uh, Science Center projects. So this will be running a Clash test against our structural and architectural file for the Science Center. So once I get all of my wall and floor categories selected, I can go down and set my tolerance. So let's put this at 0.25 meters and go ahead and run the test. And it comes back with 311 clashes. So go ahead and press OK. And so here's a list of all of our clashes. Now selecting on one of these will actually show one object in red and show the other one in green. And then you can go ahead and start editing from there. So if I jump into this first one and move over to the side, let me get this in view so we can actually see everything. Go ahead and full screen this for now. But uh, we have our floor and we have our wall. So if we go down to where it says Object 2, Edit, and this will actually open up this. So element is within the linked file. In order to modify this element, you need to close the current file and open the linked file. And that's the linked file. Go ahead and press Continue. And what this is going to do is actually close out the current Revit project that we had open, so our site file, and open up the linked file that has these objects inside of it. Once this file opens up, we'll be able to go ahead and start editing. So we already have these linked files uh, loaded into Fuser, so we don't need to do anything about that. And uh, so yeah, once this, uh, once this goes through and does its check, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, we'll be able to kind of go through and edit everything. We can go ahead and ignore this. But uh, we have this resynchronization with Revit that pops up over the front of our Fuser screen. And what this means is at the bottom left-hand corner, you can see we have a percentage and reconnecting. It's actually going through and checking all of the objects from the Revit project it just opened to the objects it has inside of Fuser and making sure they match. It wants to make sure, hey, the file that we just opened is the file that we have synced in so that we can go ahead and make sure this is accurate and everything you change is uh, reflected correctly. So once that's done, the message goes away and you can see we already have our project open and the floor was selected for us. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this floor and kind of just move it off the wall so that we can watch how this gets resolved. So select the uh, edge right here and use the move tool. I'm just going to move it off the wall a little bit. Let me zoom in here and get a better view. See if we can get this pretty close to the wall but not inside of it. So right about there and OK. A little bit further than I wanted, but that's all right. It'll, uh, it'll get the point across. So if you see over in the fuser side of the things, the floor is no longer green. It's actually turned to the material of the actual floor. And inside our manager, it says resolved. So it checks once you make the changes to see, was it resolved? And if so, it, it updates it inside the manager to reflect that. So this is just a really easy way of finding your clashes inside your different projects and uh, going through and opening up the different linked files to make the corrections. The next thing I'll be showing is the editing of lights. 
I'm going to go ahead and close out this minimap really quick and then go to the sundial and move the arrow to nighttime. As you can see, the sun goes down and the lights in the building will actually come on. Let's go ahead and edit some of these lights now so you can see how easy it is. As I come around this corner, you can see I have these six lights on the ceiling. I don't need all six to light this area, so I'm going to select one, go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab, and do Edit Selection. This will just help me find the area in my project that I'm working in. Go ahead and just select a row of these lights now, and then delete them. And now I'm going to select this other row and just center them on the ceiling so it just looks a little bit nicer. So select all three, and move them to the center. Now as you see, as I do this, the lights will actually turn off inside a fuser, and then they'll start turning back on. This is just the lights recalculating how they're supposed to be lighting the area. Another thing to mention is the render modes. So we have consistent and uh, realistic. When turning on realistic, we'll actually use the light color, whereas consistent is always white. So if you don't want any of the, uh, the lighting to affect your environment, just use consistent. But we're going to be using realistic for this example so you can kind of see how the lights change. So we'll go ahead and select one of these lights, and then inside of Revit, I'm going to select one. and Go to the edit type so you can kind of see the BIM information, how it matches up. So we're at 4150 and 4150. Now if we go inside to actually change this value, so select the initial color, and I'm just going to change it to uh, the white, and press OK, and then press OK again. And you can see the lights will actually turn off, and when they come back on, we should have a set of white lights kind of lighting the hallway. So there we go. As I select this again and go to Edit Type, you can see that we are at 6500 for our initial color, and inside of Fuser, if I select it, we're at 6500 as well. So white was a little bit difficult to tell, much of the difference between the yellow to the, to the white. So I'm going to go ahead and select one again and change it to a different color. This allows us to see how consistent and realistic really works. Uh, so make it a red light and press OK. And now these lights should turn off and they're going to come back on and give us these red lights to light our area. So as they turn back on, now we have red lights and you can see how the red falls on the carpets and the walls. Just so, it, I mean, it looks like these are actually the red lights uh, filling it in. But if I go to consistent, you can see that now we've turned back to the white lights. So consistent will always have white light. So your sunlight will always be white. Uh, your lights inside the buildings will always be white. Another thing to mention about lights is you can actually come up to individual lights, select one, and switch them off. And this will turn that light off. So go ahead and select another one and do this again. Select it and switch off. And if we go back to the first one, we can select it and turn it back on. So you can just go around your project turning off lights in certain areas if you don't want them on. You can also go through and turn all of them on, or turn all of them off. So you can turn all of them on off, so it's nighttime. We've turned all of our lights off, and now we turn them all back on. And select this one and switch it back on. And you can also use uh, nighttime only, so nighttime only is the default. So when it's nighttime and the sun goes down, the lights will actually turn on in the building. The next feature that I'll be showing is the camera snapshot feature. I'm going to use the 2D nav map to get my avatar to where I want to be. So right click the 2D nav map and my avatar will teleport to the point that I clicked. Now let's go ahead and line up my snapshot. I'm going to go ahead and get these menus out of the way really quick. Now I'm going to try to get as much of this building in the view or in this shot as possible. So I'm going to back up as far as I can go to about there. And I'm going to go ahead and try to line this up right there. And now go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and go over to the camera snapshot button and click on it. And what this is doing is sending all of the camera information from Fuser into Revit. And Revit's created this new scene for us, so our Fuser Snapshot 2. So really we've just created a camera inside of Revit using the camera information from Fuser. As you can see, our scenes kind of line up. Now you can go ahead and do your render inside of Revit. I'm going to use some movie magic here. And uh, here is our Revit scene that we have rendered out. So just a real easy way of finding snapshot locations while using Fuser and then using Revit's Ray Trace Renderer to render the snapshot. The next feature we're going to take a look at is the FBX Replace feature. I'm just going to go ahead and select this parking line and do an edit selection. This is just to help me find where I'm working at inside my project. Now let's go ahead and place a couple RPCs here. So we have our RPC beetle. I'm going to go ahead and place one here and place one over here as well. Now we can just hit Escape to finish that and hop on over into Fuser and you can see that our RPC cars will be popping in here shortly. There they are. So, I mean, they look kind of like cars, but not very good looking cars. So let's go ahead and replace them with a better one. So select the RPC and go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and the FBX Replace button. Now in this menu, click the FBX button and let's go ahead and navigate to our FBX file. 
and we have our car so let's select that FBX file and click open and save and this will save that FBX over this RPC so every time this RPC is rented for this project it's actually going to render this uh, FBX car instead so here is our car it looks a lot better than what we had before so this is just a really easy way of taking these low poly RPCs and replacing them with nice looking uh, FBX files the next feature I'll be showing is the annotations feature as you can see we have this arrow floating above the ground and we have this planter box that uses the wrong material I'm going to select the planter box and go to the annotation button and now we can give this object an annotation so say change material and for the content let's say uh, change me let's go ahead and click the save button and let's go over to our arrow and select it and click the annotations button and now let's give this one a title say floating arrow and for the content let's say lower me and save this out so now we have our two objects with their annotations on them Let's go ahead and show you how this works. Let me move forward and get out of here so I'm not standing next to them. And I'm going to go up to my Tools tab and to the Annotation Manager. And here's for the two annotations. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Change Material one. And you can see the camera moves to the position the camera was originally at when the annotation was created. Also, if you go to the arrow, you can see that the camera moves to the same thing, the same position it was at when the annotation was created. Cancel that. It goes back to our previous camera. And as I turn around, we have our two annotations. We can actually turn the annotations off. So if you don't want to see the red things while you're moving around your project, you can turn that off. You can also save the annotations out so you can come back and have them at a later date. And let's go ahead and select these annotations and delete them so we can load them back in. So select it and delete. And select and delete. Let's go ahead and click the load button. And let's navigate to my annotations file and click open. And now we have our annotations back. We can go click on them and the camera goes back to the correct position for each of them. And when Fuser actually takes this one step further, we can actually take this annotation file and load it into Revit. So you go to the Load Annotations button and navigate to your annotations file and click Open. And here's our two annotations. Just double click on one of them and it will actually highlight that inside of Revit for you. So here's our planter box. And here is our arrow. Go ahead and show you one more thing. Actually, actually deselect the object and zoom out a little bit so you can see both of these. You can turn the highlight annotations on and this will actually outline your annotations with a red outline. The next feature I'll be showing is the Sun Study. To see the Sun Study information inside a Fuser, you can go to the Scenes Control tab and the Times Control tab. Here you'll find the Sun Dial with the time of day, the default city of San Diego, and the date of January 18th, 2014. To set up our own Sun Study, we can do that through the Sun Settings section. Let's go there and select a single day, sunrise to sunset, 15 minute intervals. Let's go ahead and select a city. I'm going to go to the default city list and type in New Orleans and select it and let's go ahead and select use daylight savings time so check box that and so OK and press OK now to send this information over into Fuser we need to turn our sun path on so let's do that now so sun path on and this will send the sun study information from Revit to Fuser and Fuser will update to reflect these changes so you can see the time of day is starting to change inside of Fuser and now we're at 4.45 and if I back out inside of Revit and find out where the sun is, and see, here it is, you can see that the time is actually 4.45. We can actually drag the sun along inside of Revit. Now here we are at 10.15, and look over into Fuser, we're at 10.15. Now if you don't want to go through the hassle of dealing with the Revit UI, you can do that through Fuser as well. Just click on the arrow in the sundial and just change the time of day, and we'll follow the same sun arc from Revit. You can also click a point, and the sundial will move to that point. Finally, you can use the one times, two times, or four times to do a 24-hour time lapse of that day. The next feature I'll be showing is the Assign Video feature. I'm going to go ahead and select this TV screen and do an edit selection. With the screen selected, I can go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and down to the Assign Video button. Once this menu opens, click the Video button to navigate to your video saved location. I'm just going to use the Windows default video for now. I'm going to select it and click open and now click save. Now the video will start playing on my TV screen. This feature is just a nice way to add an extra little something to your presentations. Uh, the assigned video supports MP4s, AVIs, and WMVs. For the final feature, I'll be showing the cinematic editor in the screenshots control tab and the screenshots and cinematics controls. Go ahead and click the take cinematic button. This will open up our cinematic editor. We'll go ahead and full screen this so we we're not going to be working in Revit anymore. And I'm just going to back out and try to find a nice spot to start the cinematic. Uh, for the cinematic, we're just going to fly kind of to this intersection and then make a right turn and go down the street. 
I'll uh, keyframe the time of day for all of this so you can kind of see how that works. So we're going to start right about here. Let me change my time of day to uh, right before the sun rises, so right about here. And click on the timeline and add a node there. Now I'm going to go ahead and fly forward down to the intersection. And, uh, to about here. I'm going to go ahead and change the time of day to be right about here. And I want this, the lights to go off in the building, so let's leave the lights on in the building. And right there. Go ahead and make the right turn. Fly forward a little bit. And let's go ahead and let's try to straighten up on this road to right about here. Let's change our time of day actually. Let's make it a little bit later in the day now. So right there. And let's add that to the timeline. Let's fly down to the end of the street. And uh, we'll end it down over here. Let's go ahead and actually have the sun setting for the ending. So let's change our time of day again. And the sun goes down. And, uh, oop, let's make sure it gets just right as it sets. So right there. And add that to the timeline. Now we can click the play preview button. And this will show us what we're going to be rendering out. Kind of gives you a good chance to go through and see the timing of everything. And this last section right here is going pretty slow. So we'll go ahead and speed that up by a couple seconds. So we can go ahead and pause our preview. I'm just going to drag this on the timeline to a new spot. And that will change the time. Uh, now we can go ahead and preview it again to see how it looks. And as we get to this last section, it looks better. It's a couple seconds faster, so that will work. You can actually drag this little blue arrow on the timeline as well to scrub through everything. Let's go ahead and render this out. Our render options, so for video quality, we have draft, medium, and high. And our resolutions are 480, 720, and 1080p. So let's pick 1080 and high and go ahead and click save. Now we can give our file a name, so let's say example video and save. We'll save over the previous one, yes. And now the rendering will start. I'll be back once this is finished. And here is our rendered video. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was informative and I hope you enjoy using Fuser.